Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm so excited to introduce our guest, friend, and amazing guy, Mr. Greg Ives. Greg, thanks for being on here. Hey, thanks for having me, Aaron. Awesome. Good to be here. Yeah. Pretty excited. I'm <laughs> excited to introduce Greg because he is one of the best title guys in San Diego, maybe in the world, <laughs> definitely in the USA and in San Diego. So, Greg. Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> tell us, tell us your story. I, I know you've sure. been in the title business for a long time. Tell us how you got involved in that. So uh, it was back in 2003. Um, I was living in Pacific Beach with a couple college friends of mine, and a buddy of mine somehow managed to get into title insurance as a sales rep. And uh, back then, we could do a lot of entertaining, playing golf, taking people to uh, baseball games, and I was watching. You know, a good friend of mine just have a blast, go out, have a good time, and, and make some good money doing it. And uh, there was an opportunity with another company that he introduced me to, and so he got me into the business. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, the rest is. Rest and you're is and you're still there, 2003 with 2008. So yeah, it's, this is my 15th year. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of gone by in a flash. And my friend too is still in the business. He works for another title company. He works up in North County. So it's good we don't have to compete against each other. And so how has the industry changed in the last 15 years, the landscape? The like I said, when I first started, it was really all about entertainment, you know, taking good care of your clients, having fun, taking them to happy hour. And then about 10 years ago, there was a California bill that came, came down saying that title companies cannot provide any entertainment, meals, anything of real value to the client. I don't really understand why they did that, but those are the rules and uh, that changed the landscape significantly. We had to go from being like the best entertainer and the best friend to being really like a technician in the field and that's really how we kind of build our value is the knowledge base and, and the service. And I've seen that, right? you, you, you've done that now substantially, the, the value that you provide your clients. Yeah, I mean we try to be really super involved in every transaction. Um, title companies are really like a high volume transaction business and it's really easy for people to just take the order and kind of move on um, without really diving into the, the, the details of the transaction. So as a team, you know, we try to really be very personal in what we do. Fantastic, and so, so t take us back. So 2003, I'm assuming there was a learning curve, right? Did, did you work under, were you mentored? How did you yeah. get going? <laughs> yeah. I smile because I remember it just like yesterday. <laughs> Um, I worked for a small company, a, a new startup company at the time down um, in 2003, and really it was trial by fire. I mean, my bosses were great, they kind of explained how the real estate business worked and transactions worked, but at that point it was just like go out, get the business however you can. And for me, um, at that time it was really working with a lot of subprime mortgage brokers. The real estate world there was, you know, all refinance business, so it was really Refinances. Refinances were a big part of my business back then. Um, not so much on the resale kind of realtor relationship because I didn't have the knowledge and the expertise. I was more of like the entertainer and like be able to show up, you know, make good friends with these people and, and provide good service as well. That was my business for, you know, about five years until the subprime mortgage market significantly changed. And, and then, then what happened in 2008? I mean, how did so I had to adapt to the market. You know, overnight I lost probably like 25% of my clients just with them going out of business and you know, we all know what happened with the mortgage industry. So, you know, I had to make a pivot and uh, focus on working the resale market and the distressed market. So I kind of made, made a niche going after the investor business. Since the REO business was really difficult to obtain working for a smaller company, I took it upon myself to go down to like the courthouse and meet the investors who were buying property um, through the foreclosure sales. Wow, so definitely sort of going in a contrarian route and finding different ways to build up clients even yeah. though you know you just lost 25% of your business, you're like, let's figure it out. Yeah, I mean there was really not too many choices on where to get business at that point. You know, it was find an REO account and, and get that relationship or go after the people who are um, transacting the business by buying the distressed sales or finding short sales and things like that. Great. So, Greg, tell us for those who don't know what title insurance is, what is it? Because it's kind of confusing. It's one of those things that shows up on a closing statement that most people don't understand what they're paying for, but it's a really important item in the real estate transaction. Basically, we ensure the clean transfer of ownership between the seller and the buyer. When somebody goes into escrow, we create a report 
that list everything that's encumbering the property. So things like loans, things like uh, easements, which are like public utility right-of-ways. Sometimes there's like driveways or public roads that can affect the property. And so we produce a report that kind of lists all those things. And the nice thing about title insurance is that it's only a one-time fee. And we basically insure everything from history to now. Whereas regular insurance, like homeowner's insurance and auto insurance, you're paying a continual premium for coverage for future loss. So that's the big distinction between title insurance. So you're, you're saying if we close a transaction and five years we still own the transaction, we pay the one-time title insurance fee and something pops up, you're still covered. Yeah, we cover everything leading up to this, the purchase of that property. So if five years down the road, somebody comes and makes a claim and says, I'm part owner in that property that you purchased five years ago, then you as the homeowner have protections to sort that issue out. So that kind of leads into my next question. Tell us some of the horror stories and some of the successes that you've had. Well, let's just talk about the horror stories. The horror stories, yeah. Well, a lot of times the horror stories come when the seller is not super forthcoming with the real estate agent. There's a lot of times that the sellers have financial issues, child support issues, family issues that they don't disclose to the realtor. There's a lot of times where we'll open up a title report and we'll see that maybe they have a federal tax lien that they didn't tell anybody about. Particularly with a federal tax lien, those can take a long time to, to cure and to straighten out. And given the, the financial situation of the, of the property and the person, sometimes those federal tax liens can kill, the deal. kill a deal. But even today, you know, we're working on a deal right now and we're, we're very, very close to closing this, but it's a luxury property in La Jolla and the seller had six federal tax liens oh, wow. and all six of them were six figures. We're probably gonna be able to close that deal, uh, but it's, it's been open since September. It's just an example of how long it takes to kind of cure those issues. And so, and I'm, I'm assuming on the flip side, you've seen the success happen when I'm assuming claims have come across and you're like, no, we've, you've got clean title, right? There was a claim that occurred in La Jolla as well that was a significant claim for the homeowner. Basically, we had insured a transaction where the homeowner was given a piece of land that he had used to build like a gazebo. And there was documentation that was provided that showed that he was given that ownership. The neighboring property had been resold, so the new owners came in and basically tried to make a claim that that part of the property was theirs. So there was a dispute between the new homeowner, homeowner that was down the hill versus our client who owned the property and that was given the rights to that, that particular land. And so there was a lawsuit that was filed and there was a lot of issues that came around with that. But because they had title insurance, because we had been given the proper documentation, we defended that homeowner and successfully you know, negotiated you know, a resolution for both parties. Fantastic. You are one of the top title guys in town, right? And so what makes you personally so successful? For me and, and the team that I'm part of, we're, we're very involved on every transaction and, and we continually learn through doing transactions you know, how to identify issues. So we're very upfront with our clients, with our real estate clients, our developer clients, our investors, and we, we notify them immediately if there's an issue that we have to navigate through. And having that solution, having it quickly, is really the key to success. Also, you know, there's a lot of value in connecting people. So there's been times where I've been talking to a client, they have a, a listing that's not maybe not on the MLS, and they're looking for a buyer, and I just so happen to be talking to another client that has a buyer that's looking for a property and there's been multiple scenarios where I've connected two different clients so that they could come together and make a real estate transaction. That provides you know, a lot of value to them and so that's how I kind of build up the client base as well. Fantastic, and so if you were just starting out, say you were starting from scratch or you, know, you woke up in a coma and you couldn't, couldn't kind of remember things, <laughs> yeah. what, what sort of things would you tell yourself to remember on this business? And, to get started well with. it's it's a long road to success for sure and uh, even after 15 years there's a lot more success ahead for for myself and, and the team that I'm part of but you know the number one thing I just tell people who are starting whether it's in title or escrow or whatever is just persistence and just keep showing up you know you're gonna hear a lot of no's fortunately my position as a title rep um, is super competitive and we're not necessarily the highest on the totem pole of who people want to talk to. 
So realtors, you know, they're kind of like the hub of the transaction and, and there's a lot of vendors who are relying on their business to help their business. So it can be challenging to even just get an appointment with a realtor. So just showing up, being there at every opportunity and, and finding an opportunity when their preferred vendor, you know, takes a step back or isn't able to perform. Just showing up every single day, knocking on doors, making phone calls. But I also know that you're quite an avid goal setter. You set, you know, you have your team goals. Talk about that. Yeah, I didn't really buy into the whole writing down your goals thing um, until about like six or seven years ago. And, you know, it's refreshing to get to the end of the year, look back at what you've written down. And like, I prefer to like, just check those things off the list, be like, oh yes, sweet. I, I was able to achieve this. I was able to get this, but you know, these two or three major things, like I came up short. And so that gives me like the perfect, like mental reset right at the end of the year, right at the beginning of the year to look back at what we did the year before, but then also set, you know, additional goals for the new year. You know, as a team at First American, we have some pretty lofty goals. We definitely want to be the number one team in San Diego. That's always been a goal, you know, for me personally, I'm super competitive. It's actually really helped to be able to lay those things out on paper, and be able to look at them. I love it, yeah, I know. So that's one of the steps that you feel people should do. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Just like anything, it's, it's important to have like that work-life balance. And I set goals for my, my profession, but I also set goals like for my personal life. And they intertwine them. Yeah, they, they certainly intertwine. I mean, awesome. there, there's the successes that come with professional life, hopefully will translate into the successes in your personal uh, life. Absolutely, I to totally believe that. And so what's really interesting, Greg, you've, you've been in the real estate industry now for you know, longer than, than most people on, on average, right? 15 years, a long time, you've seen some cycles, but you see the real estate industry from a very different yeah. point of view because you're not a realtor, you're not a developer, you, you do do investing as well, um, but you're on more of a service providing side so, but you've, and you see a lot of transactions. So where is the market right now? What do you see happening? Yeah. Tell us your, your, your point of view on the market. Sure. Title reps and title companies are really good gauges of the marketplace because of the, the amount of volume that the company and, and the reps do. So we've seen a, a drop off in the overall transaction count. Last year, our transaction count was down about 5%, but the revenue, overall revenue was pretty even. It's obviously saying that the prices are going up because our title premiums are going up, but um, the overall transaction count is going down. And you talk to anybody in the real estate world, the inventory issue in San Diego is a real issue. And the affordability. I so mean, is your count going down because of the inventory issue or just because of the transactional volume in general? Well, it's because of the overall transaction count. You know, our goal as a company at First American is to capture 25% market share. So our goal, even though the transaction counts are going down, it's to go out and capture more market share so we can kind of make up that ground. But I think, a, you know, the big issue in San Diego is affordability. The median price is, you know, over 550,000. And unfortunately, the, the job market in San Diego doesn't really, you know, have that many high paying jobs that a large portion of the population can afford. To get that 550 million, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So affordability, uh, lack of inventory, yeah. And uh, what about on the positive sides? On the positive sides, San Diego is a great place to live. Everybody wants to move here. And if you are able to achieve a home ownership, owning a home in San Diego is a great investment. The you know, climate's not going to change. The beaches aren't going anywhere. You know, it's overall, it's, it's a really good opportunity. Working with investors though, they're still able to build value. You know, there's a lot of like infill projects that are happening, you know, higher density type projects. I think we're going to see a lot more of that coming down the line. Fantastic. Well, Greg, I really appreciate your time. I think you added a lot of value for the clientele for, for being here today. And if people are looking to uh, find you, how uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Well, you can obviously uh, give me a call at 858-232-5976, um, or you can just Google First American Title, uh, Greg Ives, or San Diego Title Team, which is the team uh, that I'm part of. Greg, thanks so much uh, for being on. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Awesome. Appreciate being, yeah, being invited. What here. a great interview. Thanks. thanks for adding so much value to uh, the community. Appreciate it.